What a shit show. <laughs> My play spirit up in this video is not about a review of WrestleMania. I'll tell you the outcomes and all that. I did not see WrestleMania. One, I have work the next day, and two, really, money is only it's not worth spending for, quite frankly, the bills. Um, yeah. Look what I saved. <laughs> Four dollars. <laughs> One, two, three, four, some quarters. They're wasting 70 bucks on this piece of shit, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's get this started. First, you get the pre show. You got the news and wait there for the not really prestigious Intercontinental Championship. The championship is fucking dead, even though they brought the old design back. Miz wins somehow. You get the title. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, the real show starts now. And here's a question for you guys. Does Mrs. Wynn at the pre-show of WrestleMania, is that a win for WrestleMania on his streak? Or no, yes, maybe, no, I don't know. Guys, let me comment, I don't know. I, I think it is, but it's not on stage. Um, first match, and the real first match, is The Shield versus Randy Orton, Sheamus, and Big Shield. I like this as a beginning opening match. You get the young guys out there that have kind of experienced pay per views. Get the three freaking you know, Sheamus and friends like, <laughs> like I've been hearing. Uh, it's better than a World Heavyweight like, title match. I mean, that should be at the end of the show or near the end of the show, so I thought it was a pretty good placement. Uh, the Shield ended up winning. And instead of having something interesting, like a heel turn that actually fucking matters. You have the guy that was a heel or wasn't a heel for a little bit become a heel again. Now we know he's a freaking heel. What kind of bullshit is that? I mean, come on, WWE. You really want to call straight down forward? Oh, the guy who doesn't fit in turn his heel. Wow. If you want to dumb this shit right, you would have Orton turn heel because he's trying to be a peacekeeper, uh, fucking peacemaker and all that shit. He's put a big show on there. Have him betray them and have the shield win. I'm happy for the shield to win, but the heel turn out there was fucking stupid the wrong fucking guy. Sheamus, there's no fucking reason to do it, but Orton, so stale he is in the fucking face, definitely deserves to turn heel at this moment right now. If he did something, he got three strikes or some bullshit. Alright, after that, you got Mark Henry defeating Ryback. This was actually one of the predictions. I didn't make a prediction video, so I went for it, but I made a few predictions. This is the one I got wrong. I think I have a whole fucking show. <laughs> it, it was one of the fucking stupidest ways to do it. You know, you got Mark Henry going over, all half to him, he's at the end of his line. You got young guy, Ryback, who's having a fucking losing streak at pay-per-views. You might as well have him fucking do it, at least. And it's all about setting up that one moment where Ryback picks up Mark Henry and does his fucking shell shot. They modify a fucking running to moment drop. You know, that's the whole purpose of that match. It's just a view. It's, you know, it's kind of like, like it, it's not a great as I'm just saying. It's just like a moment like, the you know, Andre John get picked up by Hulk Hogan. Uh, your other big guys, you know, like, they try to do a Kane and Ray Cawley while that Kane picks them up. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> you have this moment, so you put them up, and instead of having him do the shell shock looking fucking impressive, Mark Henry falls on him, and like, it takes 10 seconds later, I'm hearing from someone else's view, so he might not be completely acting, I apologize. It's just my thoughts on the show. He falls on him, takes him 10 seconds, and pins him 1, 2, 3. And that's just the worst part of it. But after Mark Henry celebrating, fucking linebacker gets up, does the fucking shell shock in him, and then you leave. What kind of bullshit is that? Simplify it. It happened to the shell shock win. I was actually looking out, know, this is one of the matches I was kind of kind of forward to, so I was going to watch the fucking pay per view. Last pay per view I fucking bought was Extreme Rules. Big fucking mistake for that main event. That's all the reason I bought it. It was these John Cena's ass game. You know, Punk and Jericho, yeah, I love Jericho, so that was a good match. That was a match tonight. Or Kane when he's actually in Mosh or two, but go off topic. What the fuck is that about though? Right back doing the move and bam. That's how the fucking match should have ended. Are you trying to swerve us? Because that's like the only kind of swerve the guy in the fucking night. But Big Show turned heel the fucking surprise. He's already a fucking heel, basically. After that, you got fucking Team Hell No Beans, all Sigurd and Biggie Lanks, and you know, uh, new match for the new guy. Not really crazy for debuts on Mania, but if you're gonna build a superstar, I guess it's great to have a debut at Mania. Um, 
to hear much about this match or try to fucking boring apparently team hell no battling off some bullshit. I don't really give a fuck about it really. That's that I got Fandango defeating Chris Jericho. You have a legend like Y2J. He's one of my favorites of all time. He's like he's in my top three of all time. I'm not making a video on that. I don't know. I never get the fucking point of it. I understand that he came back here. here. I think he's 42. He wants to put over the young talent. I understand that. I'm all for that. But for a talent to pack like Sam Dango, the guy that he has to tell everything to fucking do in his match. Oh, go here. Go there. Go over there. Jump down. Jump upside down. Do a little gay ass fucking entrance. Woo! And you put this guy over. <laughs> it's a cheap action. You get to roll up on him. You know, it makes Jericho look strong. It makes Dan Dangle look, oh, you gotta win. Oh my god. I guess he's the next big thing. He's the next Brock Lesnar. He's the next big thing. He's gonna be a world heavyweight champion by a happy year. You know, as we dance his way to the fucking bottom. I don't give a fuck about this dude. This sag Dangle. Oh my god. Get rid of this piece of trash, or I'd rather have fucking Johnny Curtis job, okay? That's in my opinion. Keep this guy in a low mid card job to fucking superstars. Please. Or at least switch him into something fucking different. This ballet shit's fucking gay as hell. Stop trying to advertise to the fucking soccer moms. Cause that's a body. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. and the match before, now it's also going to be length, and I went to tell, I was kind of happy for them not to win the title. Just for the reason that he's going to cash it in later. That's the whole purpose. If they were going to win that, I had no doubt that he wasn't going to cash in later because they were going to have the title. We're not going to get the title. But it would have been fucking interesting if they had A.J. Lee versus Kaylin that sort A.J. Lee wins that. They win the tag title. The Ziggler cashes in. And bam! Smackdown's fucking theirs. A stars is already. You joined this fucking group too. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So I get after that, I get the World Heavyweight Championship now, Bertha Del Rio versus Jack Sway. I didn't follow this match. All the thing I was looking for, and I actually, I don't buy the pay-per-view, I did not buy this, buy this pay-per-view, but I do go on the site during like 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock, look at the uh, results. I even woke up at fucking 2 in the morning, I'm like, who won? Ross or Cena? I knew he was going to fucking win. I, just, I had a little hope, you know what I mean? But for a different reason, I'll explain that in a sec. Uh, you get ADR winning, I don't know how they cross on break or some bullshit. So I open the results. And then it's three pages for the results. So I'm like, okay, we should go down. We should go down. Boop, boop, boop. Okay? The Swagger's winning, whatever. <clears throat> ADR turns table, whatever. Cross on break, we're gonna match over. I'm, I'm, I, I was fucking I was baffled. I'm like, where's the dot, dot, dot? Ball signal comes out, fucking cashes in the money in the bank. Where the fuck was that? But no. They can't have the future fucking cash it in and become the fucking face of SmackDown, possibly WWE later. They gotta have fucking talent over so many others. No, I just gotta keep them in this little group and have fucking Biggie Lancet interfere, then get hit out of the ring, the Dolph Ziggler fucking lose, and then have him come in and do a little fucking face plant, whatever the fuck the thing's called, I don't know. It's unbelievable. You know, then you uh, money in the bank, was it the rules that you had to cash in that mania? I know you won that mania, but still, it should have been the same fucking concept. What if next week he has to give up the fucking three kicks? What kind of bullshit would that be? You know, he wins off Cena with a fucking hat before, because Cena does not fucking deserve that. Are you kidding me? Not cashing in now? That's actually one of the freaking, not even that much things I wanted to fucking see in mania. You know, fucking ride back in Mark Henry. That's one, just for curiosity, the big guy versus the big guy. I like that kind of matches. They throw in here and there. Never happened before. That's a big thing for me. Besides that SmackDown with a shield pass on the trap. Put him in that shield bullshit. Two swagger. Fucking probably one. That'd be fucking hilarious. But I just wanted, I don't give a fuck about that actually. Two fucking Ziggler cashing in. Win that freaking title finally. Start his little thing. I know they haven't been building him up right, but he's fucking better than Bertha Del Rio. Come on. He has failed as a fucking face. 
the fans people are like, we never liked this guy in the first place, we don't like these guys now, why would we like him with the title? No. And third was the United Pickers CM Punk match, which was United. Going away from Dalton and I catch in, and I'm fucking pissed off as hell with that. I think her and um, CM Punk. Undertaker wins. Thank fucking God. I'll be fucking done with this business. See, man, here at the time, I'm already got the fucking separate from me, so, you know, if you guys are trying to encourage me, you don't need to. I'm really about to switch. <laughs> um, I heard great things about this match. I mean, but I heard it wasn't as great as the Triple H's and um, Shawn Michaels matchups that have been so fucking great in the past few years. But I heard this match was great, and this is the best match on the card, no fucking shit. <laughs> so yeah, yo, uh, happy to take a win. I don't know if he did do like a little Paul Bear thing, you know, or anything there, and I hope he did, that'd be kind of cool, but I'm happy he won. Dave Puff does not deserve it, quite frankly, you know, I understand he's trying to make this guy a legend or whatever, you know, but there's no reason to do it. Over here, I'm going to have basically two guys, two kind of guys, like a young guy, that's 24, we want to build up to be the next, you know, fucking Brock Lesnar. Yeah, if Brock Lesnar just came out and challenged the streak, you know, that's the guy you can give it to. Or you give it to Kane, because that fits a storyline where Kane wants to destroy the Undertaker and he finally gets his fucking revenge. Then he retires. Both of them retire. Good old match. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little sick. That's why I've been making videos. So after this, you get the Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. No holds barred. Basically, the match we're going to get is SummerSlam. But Shawn Michaels is at the style, which was supposed to be a SummerSlam before Brock Lesnar broke his arm or whatever fucking shit out. Triple H's career was on the line. And you know that motherfucking ego. This is a rematch. He's going to win it. If his career's on the line, he's going to fucking win it. So, no fucking surprise, Triple H wins. He sits his ego on the game. Uh, makes Brock Lesnar look like shit again, even though he's fucking way younger than the guy. I think he's 35 or so. He could still wrestle a few more matches. But I heard a lot of complaints on this match in a lot of ways. Is I think there wasn't a lot of weapons used to stuff like a steel chair and steel steps. I don't know if there's a flush hand to use, but this is what I've been hearing. Um, I thought the other thing I heard a lot of uh, uh, the match between Scott Steiner. Triple H, I don't remember if it was at the Royal Rumble at some point. I, if a lot of people be, I'm sorry. But basically, that match, Scott Starr did like 20 belly to belly suplexes or suplex likes. Apparently, Brock Lesnar did that. Uh, Triple H tried to beat him with the uh, fucking, his some the Brock Lesnar submission, which would have been fucking bullshit. You know, you're just stomping on MMA completely. This guy was an MMA fucking champion. I don't think there's blood in that match, and I'm fucking pissed off because, you know, this one, it's, I mean, if there is, then okay, I'm sorry. But what I'm hearing, I don't think he, no one bled, and I'm kind of disappointed in that, because, you know, you should have blood at least in that fucking match. I mean, what's next? The fucking old bar, the pillow fight? Like, come on. Triple H goes over, I believe, Shawn Michaels, Sweet Chin Music, uh, Paul Heyman during that match. 